Hello, this is a short podcast to show how to build the simple epidemiology model or the SIR algorithm using Vensim. I've got three stocks in this model. I have susceptible population, infected population, and recovered population. So I'm going to represent each of the populations with a box variable. So this is going to be susceptibles, and I'm going to call that S. I'm going to hit an enter key there, click here. This is going to be an infecteds. And that's I. Again, hit the enter key and recovers. And that's going to be R. And I have, I can use my move to move things around. If I need to delete something, I can hit the delete key or delete icon there and delete something. So now I got to go put my recovers back. And I'll do that just like that. Okay, and again, I can move things around with the hand if I need to make it make it look all pretty. Okay, what happens now is I'm going to click on the rate icon. This is a flow. Click in the middle of susceptibles and drag to infected, and I'm going to call this get sick and hit the enter key. So notice now I have a flow. Notice the direction of the flow going from susceptibles to infected, and that should make some logical sense. Likewise, while I still have the rate icon clicked, I'm going to click on infected and drag into recovers, and this is going to be called get better. Okay, and I hope that makes sense as well. And so I have the beginning structure of my model here. I have some constants in this particular model, so I'm going to click on variable. Uh, you can put them anywhere you want. I'll put them down here. One of them is the infection probability. And this is the rate at which, or the probability at which, that if you come in contact with a, uh, a person who is infected and you are susceptible, that you will um, get whatever that particular disease is. Likewise, still using variable, I'm going to click over here and click on recovery time. And recovery time is a measure of how quickly you get better once you've had the particular disease. Okay. Uh, the main mathematics here is that getting sick is your differential equation, and that's defined as uh, my infection probability. I probably should call that R because that's what we call it in the algorithm. My recovery time is called A in the algorithm. And my get sick uh, differential equation, the math for that is R times S times I, or infection probability times susceptibles times infected. And so to define get sick there, I need to grab a, uh, an arrow and make sure that uh, infection probability is uh, seen by uh, the get sick icon. Likewise with susceptibles, I'm going to draw an arrow there. And likewise with infected, I'm going to draw an arrow there. I sort of like to come up under move here and look for the uh, little circle there. And it takes a little gentle touch to be able to do this and drag those arrows up so I can see them uh, a little better. Likewise, on the other side, uh, getting better is defined as the recovery time times the number of infected, or A times I. So I'm going to click on recovery time and go into there. Uh, I'm going to click on infected and go into there. And once again, I grab the hand, look for the little circle there, uh, drag that up so I can see it. Sometimes it's nice to drag this and get it, see if you can get it out of the way of the letters there. You can also move these things. Uh, apart a little bit so there's a little bit more room sort of space them out make them look a little prettier so you can uh, you know expend a little bit of effort to try to make these things look uh, look a little a little nicer and that's not that's not bad okay that's not bad okay so there's the structure of my model so I have all of the structure in now I need to define equations I'm going to click on equations and everything should turn black here I'm going to click on susceptibles, and what it's asking me for is the initial value, and I have 999 uh, people who are susceptible, and notice that this is called a level. And I'm going to click on OK. I'm going to click on infected. The initial value there is 1. There's one sick person. I'm going to click on OK. And recovered is 0. There, Nobody has gotten better, so I'm going to click a 0 there and click on OK. The infection probability for this particular model is 1 over 500, so there's a 1 in 500 chance. Notice that says constant there, that's what we want. There's a 1 in 500 chance that you're going to get sick. 
if you come into contact with a sick person, click on OK. Uh, the recovery time is 1 over 2. Uh, this is a, uh, a day model, so uh, 1 over 2 means it uh, takes about 48 hours or 2 times 24 to get better. I'm going to click on OK there. Now, uh, the, the two hard things to define are my two flows. I'm going to click on Get Sick. And notice I have three variables right there. They're the ones that I drew the arrows for. And my algorithm says the algorithm for getting sick is the infect. And I would click and not type, okay? Because if you type them, if you mistype them and misspell them, they won't work. Infection probability times with an asterisk susceptibles times infecteds. And so I click that in. Notice that's called a normal auxiliary type. Okay, click on OK. And get better is, again, same thing. I had two arrows in there as the recovery time times the number of infected. So notice I'm clicking those in and not typing those in. I click on OK. All right, now we have a defined model, and it would be a good idea to save. Uh, we'll go up on, we're ready now to go up under model settings. Uh, yeah, we want to save it. Okay, I'll save it as uh, the SIR model and stick it on my desktop so I can find it. Okay. Now it's, saying, it's asking us how long do we want to run this model. We want to run it from 0 days to 25 days. We want our, our time step is typically going to be at least 0.25. That's probably okay for now. Uh, our unit of time is a day. And the calculus method we want to use for all of these models is Runga Cut of 4 or RK4. Okay, click on that and say OK. And now I can come up and I can hit the Simulate bot, uh, button. And if it asks me if I want to overwrite the current data set, I simply say yes. I didn't get any errors. That's a good sign. So what I want to now be able to do is see my results. I can click on Susceptibles, click on the graph, and see that my susceptibles went down. I can click on Infecteds and hit my graph and see I have the epidemic hump here about day six. Okay, click on Recovered and click on Graph and see that I have uh, everybody eventually gets better. Okay, I can, I can shift click on all three of them and hit the Graph button and, and get a graph of all three. But what you notice is they're not, they're not scaled. Okay, the, we have different scales on the axis and that makes it hard to interpret interpret the graph. I can also click on shift click on all three and show a data table. I don't like the data tables this way. They're sort of sideways to me. Um, so I can click on on data table down and if you see there uh, if I scroll all the way down to 25 minutes uh, you'll see that I have my data. Okay. Um, what I prefer to do, by the way, I can um, draw a box around this whole thing and grab my move thing um, draw a box where I grab my move and I can move the whole thing if I need to. Um, what I like to do is under control panel I like to go to graphs I'm going to make a new graph I'm going to give my graph a name I'm just going to call it populations and if I want a, a title on it okay graph of susceptibles infecteds and recovereds Okay, my x-axis is going to be, I'm going to hit the select button, that x-axis is always going to be time and not time step. Uh, my y variable is going to be, I'm going to have my susceptibles on there, so I'm going to double click there or say OK. I also want infecteds on there, where's my infecteds, there they are, and I want my recovereds on there double click on recovered and I do want to scale this so I'm going to scale this from 0 to 1000 scale this from 0 to 1000 so I'm setting y min and y max there 0 to 1000 and say OK now I can click on that graph and say display and there is a scale graph looks much better okay. close that window close this window and what I like to do is embed that graph in my model so I click on input output object click on that come dump it down here somewhere and what I want to see I want to see an output of a custom graph so I'm going to say click on that and I only have one custom graph the one I just designed called populations click on that and say okay and now it sort of looks sort of funky but when I run the model and say yes overwrite my data set I get my graph okay notice by the way that I probably need to move some things out of the way so it's not in the way of my graph and make it look pretty and 
There we go. So that's how you do this initial model. And I hope this podcast helps. Thanks very much.